Hello and welcome to the lasers and ultraviolet light video. My name is Christine Miska. In this video, we're going to do some fun hands-on experiments that you have the option to do along with me. And we'll learn about the fascinating properties of lasers, ultraviolet light, and how our eyes respond to light. The duration of the video is approximately one hour, depending on how long you take to do your own experiments at each pause and break. If you decide to do the experiments along with the video at your home, the following materials are things that you should gather. Uh, a laser pointer, an ultraviolet light pointer or a flashlight, yellow or green glow sticks, blue or purple glow sticks, and if you can, have some paper or a notebook handy so that you can write down some of your observations along the way. So I gathered my supplies so I'm ready. I've got my pencil, my notebook, I have some of my glow sticks of different colors and they haven't been broken yet. We don't want to do that yet. And I have a laser pointer, like some of you have, that has three different lights. One is a laser, one is ultraviolet, and one is just a regular flashlight. So this will be ready for our laser and our ultraviolet experiments. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's start with what is a laser? Laser is actually an acronym and it stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Luckily, we don't need to say that every time. It's easy to just say laser and people have an understanding of what that means. It's important that we talk about a few safety rules when it comes to working with lasers. So with our lasers, we don't want to be pointing those at anybody's eyes, including your own. That's not safe. We don't want to point them out in the sky towards planes. Um, that's actually something you can get arrested for, so let's not be doing that. And don't point them at people who aren't aware that you're using a laser pointer. As you see in the movies, uh, sometimes laser pointers are on weapons, and nobody likes to have a laser pointed at them. It can be a little bit scary, and uh, you could get arrested. So what things do you know about lasers? Well, first of all, we know that lasers is some type of light. We also know that it's focus light, so it makes a small dot when it shines on something, rather than a wide light like a flashlight. It travels in a straight line, a very straight line, and it can travel a long distance. Lasers are also one color. They come in different colors, but they're usually very bright in a single color. And interestingly, maybe you didn't know, lasers can be used to cut things. Lasers are used all around us in so many different products. We have lasers in CD players, drills that the dentists use on our teeth, we use laser cutters for cutting metal and different machines. Uh, lasers are actually used for tattoo removal, hair replacement, and eye surgery. As we mentioned earlier in the safety section, lasers are used for weapon sites because they point a very straight line to know where to aim your weapon. They're used for leveling tools for construction, smoke detectors, range finders, Pointers for presentations, where you point to the screen and show people what you're talking about. And one of the most famous things these days is using your laser pointer to play with your cat. If you have your laser dance around the floor, your cat will chase it. Give it a try. And of course, for those of you who have ever tried it, laser tag is a lot of fun. But maybe you didn't know that when the NASA Apollo mission went to the moon, in 1969, they left a mirror up on the moon so that on Earth we could point a laser so that we could precisely measure how far the moon was from the Earth and track it. So lasers are used in so many ways, and maybe you can invent more ways when you get older. Before we can really understand lasers, we need to learn a little something about light. So all light travels in waves, light waves, and light actually travels incredibly fast. The speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth or three 
and eight zeros meters per second, so extremely fast. Every single color has its own wavelength. So each color has a different wavelength as shown here. As you can see, the red wavelength is a longer wavelength. It takes more time for each peak in each valley of that wave, where the purple one on the bottom does waves much quicker. So it has a shorter wavelength. And the wavelength of each wave defines what color we see. All the colors together, all the wavelengths together, create white light. You've probably seen experiments in science class or with your family that show how to use a prism where you can split the sunlight or white light into all the different colors of a rainbow. So they're all in there together. Now that we know light travels in waves and different waves mean different colors, let's take a look at what lasers look like. On this top row, we see multicolor light. So you can see we've got the long wavelengths of red, we've got the medium wavelengths of green, and we've got the short wavelengths of a dark blue or purple. And that's what it looks like mixed together. In the next row, we take a look at single color light. So let's say we only have red, but the waves are staggered and uh, starting at different times. And so the bumps of the waves go up and down, but they're not all in sync or in phase. In the bottom picture, that's what light looks like when you have a laser. You have in phase, so the waves are going together, the peaks are lined up, the valleys are lined up, and it's all one color and it's all in sync. That's what it looks like when you have a laser. Now let's talk about our eyes for a moment. What colors do you think we can see best with our human eye? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple? Which colors do you think we can see best? Or can we see all colors equally? Take a moment pull out your paper and your pencil and write down your best guess as to what color you think your eyes see best or maybe which colors are hardest to see. You should pause your video here so it gives you a little time to think about this question, to write down your guess about what colors you think you see best. And then when we come back, we'll get started on preparing for an experiment to help answer this question. Now that we documented our predictions, we're gonna do some experiments and an activity. So gather your glow sticks and we need to find a dark place to do this activity. So for me, I'm going to use a closet that has a door and no windows. So maybe you can find a room or a closet or someplace else that's nice and dark for you to do this experiment. When you get there, you're going to want to bring your glow sticks. You're going to want to activate your glow sticks, which I think most of you know how to do, where you bend your glow sticks till it makes a cracking noise, and then you shake it up so that all the chemicals inside activate, and then your glow sticks start to glow. So you're going to want to have all your glow sticks activated, even if it's just two or three or four or five, however many you have, bring them up activate them and observe the different colors. From your view, which glow stick seems to be the brightest and which glow sticks seem to be the dimmest when you look at the colors. This is the point where you're gonna to wanna to pause your video and you're gonna do this activity. Um, go do it, make your observations and then come back to the video and hit play. Okay, so this is what I have to do my experiment. We have some glow sticks here. I got them in a big hundred pack, and these are the ones you can make into bracelets, but really any glow sticks will work. Um, we have a pink, a green, an orange, a yellow, and I'm pretty sure this clear one is a blue or purple. Okay, so our next challenge to do this experiment is to find a place that's dark. So right now I'm sitting in my closet in my house so that we can close the door and turn off the light, but you can go anywhere that's dark for you. Could be nighttime 
or in a dark closet or a room with no windows. So I have um, five glow sticks here, the clear one, the pink one, orange, yellow, and green that we're gonna be taking a look at. So what we wanna do is, is determine which glow stick looks the brightest. So why don't we close the door of our closet and turn off the light. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the clear one. And so I think you guys all know how to do a glow stick. So this one, you do lots of cracks along the way. And then shake it up to mix in the colors. This is definitely blue. I wasn't sure because it was clear. I didn't know what color it was gonna come out like. But that's pretty awesome and it looks pretty bright to me. All right, next one. I think the next one is the red or pink. This is a pink one. Yeah, that's definitely pink. All right. Give it a shake to mix in the chemicals. Those sticks are fun. All right, that's the pink. Looks a little brighter than the blue, maybe. Next one's orange. The shaking definitely helps blend in those spots that weren't filled in. Next up, yellow. Oh, is this yellow or is this green? Hard to tell. That's pretty bright. Oh yeah. And then the last one. Oh, so that one was yellow, of course. This one's definitely green. Nice. So they're all pretty bright, but I think the green one is definitely brighter than that blue and the yellow one. So I think I actually have them in order of the brightest being the green and yellow and the dimmest definitely being the blue uh, followed by the pink with the orange in the middle. Well, what do you think and wh what did you think was going to be the brightest? So now that we've done our best guess as to what colors the human eye can see best, and then we did some experiments with our glow sticks, now let's take a look at what the science says when it comes to colors that the human eye can see best. Let's take a look at this plot here. And what you can see on the bottom is wavelengths. Remember, each color has a wavelength. And the longest wavelengths were the red ones. So on the far right, you can see the red. And the shortest wavelengths were the blue and purple ones, which you can see on the far left. In the middle are the green and yellows. As you can see from this chart, which is highest, the peak is in the greens and yellows. So green and yellow are the colors that we can see best with our human eye. So we have the most sensitivity. So when you did your experiments with your glow sticks, did you notice that the yellow and the green glow sticks were brighter than the blue ones and the purple ones? This shows the science behind it. When it comes to making laser pointers or other lasers, you can make lasers in all different colors. But when it comes to comparing a green laser versus a violet laser, for example, you're going to need more power in the violet to be able to make it as visible to the human eye. Or you can have lower power green lasers than the violet lasers. So let's do a quick reminder with laser pointers. You have your keychain with the three lights, one LED light like a flashlight, an ultraviolet light, and the red laser. You need to be safe with lasers. Don't point them towards eyes. Don't point them at planes. Don't point them at people who aren't aware that you're using a laser pointer. And how is light made inside of the laser pointer? Inside a laser pointer, there's a laser crystal. 
And when that crystal gets stimulated with energy, it excites the electrons in the atoms. So these circles here show an atom where the nucleus is the middle solid blue circle. The electrons are the green dots, and the electrons start in the ground state, circulating around the nucleus in the blue circle. But when energy is stimulated on the laser, those electrons jump up to the red circle to the excited state. And when they fall back down to the blue level, the ground state, they emit light, light photons. And that's what we're seeing come out of the laser pointer. So here's a close-up view of your laser pointer. First of all, there's the switch, the silver button that we press to make the laser turn on. So the switch turns on the power. The power turns on the flash tube to stimulate the atomic electrons in the crystal, just like we saw on the previous page. Those electrons get excited and go to the outer ring and generate photons of one color when they fall back to the base state. In the laser pointer, there are mirrors that reflect all the photons to generate more photons and amplify the light to make it even brighter. And then there's a narrow slit that allows only the photon light traveling in one direction to escape in a laser beam, where it's one color and all the wavelengths are aligned. So like we said before, lasers come in all different colors. The laser we have is red. So the crystal in the red laser is helium neon. As you can see, the violet laser on the bottom here would be a crystal called gallium nitride. And that's the type that is used in Blu-ray drives or DVD players. So the different crystal defines what color your laser will be. And as you already know, what color of light maps to what wavelength we will see coming out. This is a picture of the full electromagnetic spectrum. So you can see the waves. We've been talking about waves, that our light travels in waves. Also other things travel in waves. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light like we've been talking about, ultraviolet light we're going to talk about, x-rays, and gamma rays. You can see on this chart that the longest wavelengths are on the left, the radio waves, and then the wavelengths get shorter and shorter and shorter all the way up to the gamma rays on the right. All of the things that are listed on this chart, electromagnetic spectrum and electromagnetic waves, they all travel at the same speed, what we call the speed of light. That's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So what does that mean? If we were to shine our laser up to the moon, it would, t it would travel the speed of light, and it would take 1.3 seconds to get there. So one second is one 1,000, or one Mississippi. That's one second. So it would take 1.3 seconds to shine your laser or a light or any of these waves from here to the moon. If you were to take a rocket ship, it would take you three days to travel that distance. And if it were even possible to drive a car, if you were driving your car from here to the moon, it would take you almost half of a year. So the speed of light is very, very, very fast. We've added to this chart some things that we're familiar with in everyday life so we can see where it falls on the electromagnetic spectrum. On the far left, the first downward arrow that's orange shows the AM radio station 1030. That's a Boston news radio station and the wavelength for that radio wave is 291 meters. That's longer than three football fields end to end so that each wave peak to peak is as long as three football fields from peak to peak. And then we can look forward and you'll see FM radio so if you listen to the radio at all, uh, you're more likely to listen to FM radio. Uh, I like the channel 103.3, and that's 103.3 megahertz, or 2.9 meter wavelengths for that radio station. So 2.9 meters is about 10 feet from peak to peak. So you can see we got a whole lot smaller 
from the three football fields, now we're down to about 10 feet. Wavelengths get even smaller for cell phones and for global positioning systems or GPS that we use for our maps, and then even smaller for microwaves that we cook our food in, and even smaller for radars that are used to guide planes, that are used by police to judge speed of cars and the radar guns. And once you get past that, now we're talking about wavelengths that are about the size of a bumblebee. So they're getting very small. And if you keep going on the chart, smaller and smaller and smaller, then we get to visible light with the big orange arrow. Because that's what we've been talking about with lasers and light. And the wavelengths for that are so small, you would have to take a human hair, the width of a human hair, and divide it by 100. That's how small a single wavelength is approximately for all the visible light that we've been talking about. If we continue to look at smaller wavelengths, next you'll see ultraviolet light, which is just past the visible light, and then x-rays. X-rays, of course, are used by doctors to be able to look and see if you have any broken bones. But let's talk next about ultraviolet light or UV light. So what is ultraviolet light? We call ultraviolet light UV, or we refer to them as black lights. You may have gone to a black light party where all the white t-shirts glow. Um, ultraviolet light does contain UVA and UVB rays that can be harmful from the skin to the skin. So the sun has ultraviolet light that can cause sun damage and sun burns. Ultraviolet light also makes some materials glow. So fluorescent materials actually absorb that ultraviolet light and some light that we can't even normally see, and then it excites the electrons and transmits light out that's at a different wavelength or a different color. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna do some experiments with that a little bit later. So how powerful are the laser pointers that we're using for our experiments? We talked about there's some safety risk with lasers that can cut things and ultraviolet light, which isn't good for your skin. But what about these laser pointers? So the keychain lights that I showed in the example in the video here with ultraviolet light, with the white light and the laser pointers, here's the amount of power that are in those three lights. The white light or the light emitting diode is about 12 milliwatts or 0 0.012 watts so a very small amount now if we compare that with a light bulb that's in your house a bright light bulb in your house is a, a hundred watts so 0 0.012 watts compared to a hundred watts is a very small amount of power when it comes to the ultraviolet light or uv light that little light is about half a milliwatt, or 0 0.0005 watts. In comparison, if you go to a place and sit under tanning beds to get a fake tan using the ultraviolet lights, you would have about 25 100 watt ultraviolet light bulbs, or 2,500 watts of ultraviolet light exposure. And our little laser pointer has about 0 0.0005 watts compared to 2,500. So it's very small in comparison. Lasers, so the laser pointer that we have here is 0.5 milliwatts or 0 0.0005 watts. If we compare that to a surgical laser, a laser that cuts uh, to be able to perform surgery, that is about 50 watts. So 50 compared to 0 0.0005, very, very small power-wise. So we get to have fun with the experiments while being safe. It is so cool that you can shine your ultraviolet light at some materials and they glow or they reflect a different color than the light you're shining at them. So there, here's a list of things that have some fluorescent characteristics that when you shine an ultraviolet light on them, they will reflect different colors. And so you can try some of these things at home. 
And um, you might even have some things in your experiment kit that are easy for you to try. So white paper, you can see some paper uh, reflects the ultraviolet light right back as purple and other white paper comes out very, very white. So that's where the suppliers wanted to make sure their white paper looked as whiter than all the others. Petroleum jelly, uh, Vaseline can shine a, a blue color. Tonic water is one of my favorites uh, because it's totally clear, but when you shine the ultraviolet light, it looks like a turquoise blue. Uh, police use ultraviolet light to detect bodily fluids, vitamin B12, chlorophyll, antifreeze, laundry detergents, again, especially the ones that claim whitest whites, they might put um, chemicals in to help the whites look even brighter using the fluorescent uh, properties from ultraviolet. Irish Spring Soap. The deadly emperor scorpion apparently shines bright bluish green when you light it up with a UV light. I'm glad I don't have one of those. Tooth whiteners have a blue tinge to it to counteract people's uh, yellowish tone teeth. Postage stamps sometimes have ink that has fluorescent dyes. Jellyfish are fluorescent and also certain minerals like amber, ruby, quartz, and others, and even banana spots can give you some fluorescent properties. Okay, so let's do some ultraviolet light experiments. We learned about ultraviolet light, and we learned that sometimes when you shine the light at different materials, it reflects back at a different wavelength, uh, a fluorescent glow of a different color. So, we're going to take our laser pointer and we're going to hit the second button once for the white light, twice for the ultraviolet light. So it's kind of a purpley violet glow, right? So that's the light that we're looking for. So the first thing we're going to shine it at is this tissue. This is basically a white Kleenex brand tissue. Um, and the color of the light is just as we'd expect kind of a dark purple color. So nothing exciting there. Um, the next thing I have that we can take a look at is just this white napkin. And this white napkin appears to be the same color. So nothing exciting there. Let's pull this aside. Now you see under here my notebook. Uh, I've been using this to record notes during our video. And uh, if we shine the ultraviolet light on that, whoa, that's definitely a different color. So that's a beautiful turquoise uh, blue, like a bright blue color, uh, not purple. So look at the border. If you go on to the napkin, it's the purple onto the blue. Look at how it's brighter and it's a blue color. That's the cool thing about ultraviolet and fluorescence, so that's really cool. Uh, let's try some other things. So we have this shirt that is a, a bright safety yellow, a neon color. Yeah, now that's definitely a surprising color. You see how it reflects back a nice bright neon yellowish green versus the what we're shining at it is purple. So it's no wonder those look so bright. Let's try a pink shirt. Oh yeah, nice bright neon pink that shines. When you shine the light on that, it definitely glows. So these would be great shirts to wear at a black light party with the ultraviolet light. That's really cool. Okay, so the other thing we had on our list was Irish Spring Soap. So we're going to try that. And it definitely is a... It just looks like the color of the Irish Spring, just lighter. So that pretty green. Again, we're not shining green at it. We're shining ultraviolet purple at it. And it reflects back an entirely different color. 
So some of you have kits to, to follow along with and you'll have paper, you'll have a piece of Irish Spring soap, and you'll also have the shirts to be able to experiment with. I have a few extra things that you might be able to find around your house. Um, so let's try the tennis ball. If you have one around your house, see if you can find a tennis ball. Ooh, that is a really nice green color. Very different than what we're shining at the tennis ball. That's awesome. Let's try some sneakers. Um, these are white Converse sneakers. They've been worn, so not super white. And let's take a look. Ah, so this is bluish, just like the white paper. So the manufacturers make these, uh, intentionally use this color because it glows a little more white, that bluish white. So it takes an ultraviolet light that you get from the sun and it makes this look whiter and bluer. And it looks like the shoelaces have the same color. Okay, let's try these Adidas shoes. I'm curious to see how these white stripes look. Okay, so these white stripes do not have the glow of blue. They're just reflecting the color we, we are shining at it. But look at the gray part of the material. That definitely has that blue glow. Look at the difference. Looks like the shoelaces just reflect back the purple or maybe a little bit pink. That seems to be a little bit different color. But it's mostly interesting that the shoe part has a blue reflection. And these white ones don't have that typical paper blue reflection that we're seeing in some of the other white things. Okay, the last thing, which I think is really cool, is uh, this is tonic water. So uh, your parents might have some tonic water around. Sometimes it's used for mixed drinks and it's very clear bubbly soda water basically. So if we shine the purple through the tonic water, ooh, so that looks very blue, that light turquoisey blue Similar to what we see on the white paper, but even, even lighter. So nothing like the purple that we're shining at it. So you should walk around your house and try some different things. Um, old mail scraps, you're gonna find a lot of your mail envelopes will have this blue glow to it, not just the notebook paper that you might have handy. And some paper doesn't. Some paper will be like this napkin, it'll be just plain white. Um, look at other things around your house, check out your sneakers, check out your plants, check out your jewels, because we saw on the list some precious jewels have fluorescent properties to them. So I hope you have fun experimenting with your ultraviolet light, because there's so many cool things you can find. So thanks for making it all the way to the end of this lasers and ultraviolet light video. Here's some of our final observations and the discoveries that we talked about. Lasers have many important applications. They have single color, in-phase light generated by stimulating crystals and exciting electrons. All light is electromagnetic waves and each color has its very own unique wavelength. The human eyes are more sensitive to yellow and green and less sensitive to blue, purple, and red and ultraviolet light creates surprising results with reflected light taking on a different wavelength and color in some fluorescent items. So I hope you continue to explore and use your laser and ultraviolet pointers to have fun and be safe. So thanks a lot for watching.